A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Now before getting into the news article discussion, I have an important announcement for you to know. Attention UPSC aspirants, mark your calendars for an unmissable opportunity. Are you gearing up for the UPSC prelims 2024? Well, we have got the workshop just for you. Join us from December 23rd to December 30th, 2023 for an exclusive and free UPSC prelims workshop. Yes, you heard it right. It is exclusively for UPSC prelims and it is a free workshop. Whether you are in Ananaha or connected virtually from other branches, this workshop is tailor-made to propel your preparation to the next level. Want to know about our agenda? It's packed with insights and strategies that you need to crack the prelims exam. From subject-specific tips and tricks to dissecting previous year's questions and analyzing current trends, this workshop has it all. Worried about handling unknown areas? Fear not. We have got you covered. Learn effective strategies to tackle those unfamiliar terrains with confidence. CSAT, stressing you out? Not anymore. Our experts will guide you through proven strategies to ace this section. Let's get ready for personalized study plans designed to optimize your learning curve and understand the paramount importance of test series through pre-storming and pre-fit. So what are you waiting for? Secure your spot for this intensive seven-day workshop. Limited offline seats available in Ananaha. So hurry, register now and gear up to conquer UPSC prelims 2024. Don't miss this golden opportunity to set yourself on the path to success. Join us for the UPSC prelims 2024 workshop and let's crack it together. See you there. So displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. According to the news article, the DGP of Assam has apologized to a forest official for the undue detention of a ranger belonging to the Kaziranga National Park. So in this news article discussion, let us understand the difference between judicial custody and police custody. Firstly, let us start with the basics of arrest. See, in India, the administration of criminal law and the various processes are governed by Code of Criminal Procedure or Criminal Procedure Code, in short called as CRPC. Chapter 5 of CRPC 1973 deals with the arrest. Here, arrest means putting restrictions on the movement of a person. It can be done by investigating officer if he or she is satisfied that the arrest is necessary to prevent the person from doing mischiefs. The mischiefs include committing the same offence again or to prevent tampering of evidence and etc. Apart from this, Article 22 of the Constitution of India also has provisions for protection of a person during arrest of detention. Remember that. Now, only after arrest, it leads to custody. Remember, the arresting authority cannot detain a person in custody for more than 24 hours without producing him or her before a magistrate as per section 57 of CRPC. So this is the basics about arrest. Now let us see about custody. Here the word custody means apprehending someone for protective care. Remember the words custody and arrest are not the same. It is true that for every arrest there is custody but not every custody has arrest component in it. Now let us see the difference between police custody and judicial custody. See generally the police custody means that the person is confined at a lockup or remains in custody of the police officer. So whenever a person is arrested by police or investigating agency and detained in custody, the police may interrogate the suspect in the police station but this detention is not supposed to be longer than 24 hours. To put it simply, the officer in charge of the case is required to produce the suspect before the appropriate judge within 24 hours. This is governed by section 167 of CRPC. In such situations, the magistrate may further remand the person to custody of police for a period of maximum 15 days after lapse of 15 days or the police custody period granted by the magistrate, the person may be further remanded to judicial custody. Hope you can get it. Now let us see the difference between them. Know that judicial custody means that the person is detained under the purview of the judicial magistrate. In such situation, the accused is lodged in central or state prison. The judicial custody can extend up to 60 or 90 days as a whole depending upon the maximum punishment prescribed for the offence. 
know that in police custody the investigating authority can interrogate a person while in judicial custody there will be no interrogation unless the official get permission of the court for questioning thirdly in police custody the person has various rights like a right to legal counsel right to be informed of the grounds and etc remember it is the responsibility of the police to ensure all these rights but in the case of judicial custody the accused will be in jail so the prison manual will govern the routine conduct of the person in judicial custody the person can apply for a bail as per chapter 33 of the cpc moreover know that the under trial person cannot remain in judicial custody beyond half of the time period of his or her prescribed maximum punishment so these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about judicial and police custody so with these learned two points now let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article recently minister of development of north eastern region donor held a virtual meeting with the chief minister of all the north eastern states to discuss about the projects implemented under pm divine scheme So in the meeting it was found that only a little over 10 percentage of funds under PM Divine has been sanctioned so far and the scheme is yet to take off in the northeastern states. So in this news article discussion let us understand about PM Divine scheme. See before entering our analysis let us see the rationale for the scheme. The states of northeastern part of India are well below the national average in terms of the basic minimum services BMS in the country. There are critical development gaps in northeast as revealed in the Sustainable Development Goal Index 2021 to 22 prepared by Niti Aayog and UNDP. This forms the basis of separate developmental scheme for the northeast. Now let us see what is Prime Minister's Development Initiative for North East Region or the PM Divine Scheme. See the PM Divine Scheme is launched to fund the development project of the north eastern part of the country. Remember it includes both infrastructural and social sector projects. It is a central sector scheme that was introduced as a part of the union budget 2022 to 23. Here we should be aware that the central sector scheme is a government scheme which is fully funded and implemented by the central government. The budget of the scheme will be 6600 crore rupees for a period of 4 years that is from 2022 to 23 to 2025 to 26. So this is the remaining years of the 15th finance commission period. Note that the scheme is implemented by the Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region. Talking about the objectives of the scheme, firstly to fund the infrastructure in convergence with the spirit of PM Gati Shakti scheme. Secondly to support social development project based on the needs of the North Eastern Region. thirdly to enable livelihood activities for youth and women and fourthly to fulfill the development gaps in various sectors so these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about pm divine scheme so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion Look at this news article according to the news article Ministry of Women and Child Development is planning to establish 17000 crash in the anganwadis across the country they are going to be established under the palna scheme see the aim of this particular program is to address the need for quality day care facility or crash for the children of working women So far nearly 5222 crash had been approved by the ministry and it is planned to depute two additional crash workers in each anganwadi So this is the crux of the news article given here so in this news article discussion we shall learn about this palna scheme from our exam perspective see the ministry of women and child development has launched an amberla scheme called mission shakti This was launched for the safety security and holistic empowerment of women. The scheme will be implemented during the 15th finance commission period of 2021 to 22 to 2025 to 26. Under the scheme, the erstwhile national crash scheme has been reorganized and renamed as Palna scheme. Note that Palna is under the sub scheme Samarthya of Mission Shakti. Note that The scheme will have a feature of Anganwadi come crash facility in it. Talking about the features of the scheme, see firstly the scheme focuses on children of age 6 months to 6 years of working women in rural and urban areas. 
here the working woman should be employed for a minimum period of 15 days in a month or 6 months in a year secondly the availability of a crash facility will be for 7.5 hours a day and 26 days a month to aid the working woman thirdly with respect to the fee details the crash facility is given at the subsidized rate it charges rupees 20 a month per child for families below the poverty line for other families it is between rupees 100 to 200 a month fourthly with the funding details of the scheme See, this scheme is a centrally sponsored one with funding mechanism of 60% from union government, 30% from state government and 10% from individual NGOs. So, these are all the salient features of the scheme. Talking about the objectives of the scheme. Firstly, it aims to provide quality crush care facility by providing a safe and a secure environment for children. Secondly, it aims to support nutritional, health and cognitive development of children. Thirdly, it will enable mothers to take up gainful employment and will lead to empowerment of women. Some of other key services offered by the scheme includes sleeping facility, early stimulation for children below 3 years of age, preschool education for children below the age of 3 to 6 years, supplementary nutrition which will be sourced locally, then growth monitoring, health checkups and immunization in convergence with POSH 2.2. So these are all certain important points that you have to remember about Palna scheme. So these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. According to the news article, the Supreme Court has said that it will have seven more judge benches in next year in order to deal with important cases. There are many key cases like subclassification of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, the interplay between breach of privilege of legislators and citizens' fundamental rights, then the criteria for an educational institution to be tagged as minority run and etc. Many of these cases will be heard by the seven judge bench headed by Chief Justice of India. This is the crux of the news article given here. So in this news article discussion, we are going to understand about various types of benches in Supreme Court. Firstly, division bench. See a division bench consists of two or three judges and it is the most common type of bench in the Supreme Court. It hears routine matters and appeal against the decision of high courts. Secondly, full bench, it comprises of up to five judges of Supreme Court. It is constituted in rare cases when a decision on a particular matter is to be taken by larger bench. Thirdly, constitutional bench, it consists of five to seven judges. The constitution bench is formed to hear cases of constitutional importance and to settle important question of law. To put it simply, a bench of two or three judges is called a division bench. A bench of three or five judges is called full bench and a bench of five or more judges is called a constitutional bench. Remember the largest constitutional bench of the Supreme Court comprises of 13 judges which was constituted in Keshwan and the Bharati case. So from this we can understand the importance of constitutional bench of Supreme Court. Now we shall know about this constitutional bench in detail. See, Article 145 of Constitution says that any case involving a substantial question of law as to interpretation of the Constitution must be decided by a bench of at least five judges. So, such a bench is called a Constitution bench. Constitution bench are not regularly constituted. They are set up only under rare cases, like if the case involves a significant question of law and demands interpretation of the constitution or if two or more benches of the Supreme Court have delivered conflicting judgments on the same point of law or if the president seeks the Supreme Court's opinion on a law or fact. So only under these cases a constitutional bench is created. From this we can understand that the constitutional benches are set up on an ad hoc basis and only when the need arises. Also note that a larger bench can overrule the pronouncement of a five judge constitution bench. That is a seven judge bench can overrule the decision of five judge bench. Now you have to remember one thing. All these benches are created with odd number of judges. This is to ensure the majority decision gets finalized. These are all some of the important points that you have to remember about 
constitutional bench of supreme court so with these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion now look at this first question this question was asked in 2021 upsc prelims two statements are given and you have to find which statement is correct here here the first statement says judicial custody means an accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate and such accused is locked up in police station not in jail so from our discussion we know that the first statement is incorrect police custody means only police has the physical custody of the accused while judicial custody means an accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate meaning he will be locked up in the jail now look at the second statement during judicial custody the police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect without the approval of the court this statement is actually correct so the correct answer for the question is option b to one d moving on look at this question about pm divine scheme three statements are given and you have to find how many statements given here is or are correct look at this first statement the scheme is being implemented through the north eastern council now the second statement says it will aim at providing livelihood opportunities to the youth and women of north eastern region now the third statement says the central government is bearing the entire fund of the scheme all the statements are correct here so the correct answer for the question is option d 1 2 and 3 now look at this third question three statements are given and you have to find how many statements given here is or are correct the first statement says it is a central sector scheme no it is incorrect it is centrally sponsored scheme a second statement says the crash facility under the scheme is provided at free of cost no it is not provided at free of cost but it is provided at subsidized price especially for the families below poverty line so this statement is incorrect now the third statement says this scheme subsumes the mission shakti scheme of ministry of women and child development this statement is also incorrect because the scheme is a subset under umbrella scheme of mission shakti so the correct answer here is option d so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion today if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening